and we are so happy to have all of y'all. I know y'all are probably used to seeing Emily Russell here. She's out sick today. So we don't want her here. I don't want to be getting sick. I share an office with her. So, so I want her to get, get better. Um, my name's Savannah Howard. For those of you that I don't know, I was an intern here last summer with Emily, and luckily I got a job. Now I get paid to do what I did before. <clears throat> so I'm really happy about that. We have two wonderful interns with us again this semester, and they are from the University of Georgia, from the College of Public Health, and the um, major of health promotion. So this is Letitia, and she's going to be doing the um, lecture lesson today about improving memory. So I'll go ahead and let you get started. Good afternoon, everyone. Like she said, my name is Leticia. I'm a fourth year student at the University of Georgia. I'll be graduating May 13, 2016 at 7 p.m. So if you dare, carry me on. Um, today I'm going to be talking about improving memory for people, which is a very hot topic because it's part of our everyday life. All right. So with you guys have some um, crossword puzzles, you guys could do them as you guys go. It's really a word puzzle. Um, you guys could do it as you eat. Um, it's no Russian dose. Um, we're going to talk about why we forget things. I'm going to give you some tips and how to improve your memory. And I'll take questions at the end. Alright, this is the... So why do we forget? Um, forgetting is part of like everyday life. It's part of the life cycle. Um, you also can forget things because of lack of sleep, stress, um, related to other disease, and also it can be related to dementia and Alzheimer. It's important to remember that like even if you start to forget things at times, like where your keys are and things like that, don't automatically think that you have Alzheimer's or dis dementia because only one in every five people at the age of 65 actually get the disease um and also like just remember it's part of growing up it's our brain reaches its <laughs> capacity at the age of 20 and as we go older our brain volume decreases and the blood flow through our brain also decreases as we age so it's part of growing up um other things that can also lead to memory loss is the type of medication you take the type of food you eat and just your daily daily activities I'll keep this here actually. <coughs> Alright, so we're gonna I'm gonna just go down these tips and then I'll go into more details. So some tips is to get better organized, pay attention to details, eat well, exercise your body, exercise your brain. Can you guys see this screen actually? Okay. Um exercise the memory, socialize, remember to not smoke, and to get plenty of sleep. Alright, so how do we improve our memory? The first thing is to get organized. Um, make sure that everything in your house is at eye level, that you keep things in the same place at the same time. So when you walk home, you put the keys on the counter every single time. The mail go in the same spot every single time so that you don't tend to forget the easier things because that's what people tend to forget first. Like, where did I place my keys today when I came in the house? And where's my mail? Where's the purse? Where's things like that? Um, and other thing is to create to-do lists. So, like, put it on the fridge. As you go in through the day, like, I, ch I walked the dog, check. I did this, check. Keep a calendar of your weekly schedule, and as you go through, just mark those things off. That helps you get organized so you don't forget things easily, and it doesn't freak you out. Pay attention to details. So if you're driving down the road, pay attention to the things you saw, you see in the morning. Think, pay attention to the things you see when you come back home. If things are like look a little different at home, as you see, just be aware of your surroundings. That helps you remember things as you go. All right, eating well. I know you guys hear this a lot. Eating well is not only good for your memory, but it's also good for your body in general. So certain group food food groups are better for memory. Um, so anything that's high in omega-3 fatty acids, such as fish, walnut, kiwi, flax seeds, tofu, which not everybody like. I don't like it personally. Avocado and cauliflower. Vitamin D is very important, not only for your bone health, but also for memory. The milk, soy, egg yolks, fortified cereals, fish, and liver. High antioxidants, so apples, which are my favorite foods, broccoli, spinach, green tea, and things like that, all good. And in our brains, we have vitamin D receptors. So if anytime you eat anything that has high vitamin D um, things in it, it 
it works together with your um, receptors in your brain it keeps it from growing because our although our brain is not growing the cells <laughs> the cells in your brains are always renewing so the higher the more uh, vitamin D you have in there the better it is for yourself exercise the body so that's another thing that's good for our health also remember to exercise for at least 30 minutes a day if it's not possible make sure you talk to your physician and see um, what type how many minutes a day you can exercise and what kind of activities you can do some fun ones that I think are cool are like golfing walking stretching yoga dancing and later on I'll talk about how you can incorporate those to make those fun throughout your day all right the most important thing you can do to help increase your memory is to exercise the brain which is why earlier today um i passed out the um these puzzles if anyone didn't get someone i'll give it to you at the end so basically you want to make sure that you're um exercising the brain because it's a very important organ of the body um so play a game for 30 minutes do a crossword puzzle play cards chess uh, a computer game even learn a new hobby learn a new language or Rosetta Stone have free languages or I don't know how much they are but you can take up a new language just to keep your brain from thinking all the time and functioning um, start fishing start knitting sewing anything that you would like to do repeat things so if you're going to a grocery list a grocery store write your grocery list down and repeat it repetition is very key for memory so the more you repeat things the more it comes from short-term memory to long-term memory and that's what you want to happen you want those everything the short-term memories to turn to long-term memories so you don't forget them eventually and listen to music it's free it relaxes it stress it helps release stress it also relieves pain Studies have shown that people who have Alzheimer's, if they listen to music as some sort of therapy, helps them with um, decreases their depression, which is a big key to help improving your memory. Socializing. Uh, we all want to have fun, so why not do the things that we need to do in a fun way? So exercise as a group, play those card games, have bingo night. Um, go out fishing with a group of people just make sure you're socializing with people so that your mental health is up to par because you don't want to fall into being consider yourself to be alone so you don't want to be depressed because if you feel depressed and you have anxiety issues then your brain is like working extra and you tend to lose some memory do not smoke that's like one of the big ones that people tend to scarcely want to talk about. If you're currently a smoker, talk to your physician about ways that you can quit smoking because our brain is already um, decreasing in size as we grow older. So as you smoke, it takes away from that brain matter and it just keeps making it smaller. So smoking speeds up the, um, the cre decreasing process of your brain and also um, mess up with your cogn cognitive thinking. So like things that you see like you forget more things because you're smoking. Um, get plenty of sleep. The CDC recommends that we get seven to nine hours of sleep, which can seem like a lot, but it's really imperative that we get enough sleep because it helps with, with like stress relief. And um, yeah, make sure that your bedroom is quiet and dark and relaxing. Um, take away any distractions before you go to bed. Um, I wouldn't recommend eating such a high calorie diet like we're eating now for lunch for dinner before going to sleep because our body is going to want to digest it and avoid caffeine that will keep you agitated while doing that. Yeah, that's it. It was brief and short. Do you guys have any questions for me about some other tips for improving your memory? Well, I answer all the questions. I have a worksheet how for you guys to take home with you it just has like the eight things to do um another thing to remember if like you're starting to feel like you're losing your memory more to contact your primary uh, physician and to get you in with the psychologist to run some tests um don't just because you're forgetting things more often don't automatically think it's something serious don't get scared it's just part i forget things all the time so i probably forgot i had to be here this morning <laughs> but i made it so if you guys don't have any questions i'll pass these out one
one other great um, service line that we have here at Clearview um, that Leticia was kind of talking about in her um, talk is a sleep lab. So since sleep is so imperative in a lot of health issues, including improving your memory, um, learning how you sleep and if you have sleep apnea or if you have trouble sleeping is a really big part of having good health. So here at Clearview, we have a sleep lab. We have people who can do those studies on you to see if you get good sleep at night and see how you can improve that in ways. So if that's something that you're interested in, um, we're really trying to grow that service line. So I have my cards up here, my business cards, and then I also have some of Emily since she's not here today if you have questions for her. So if you want to reach out to either one of us, we can help get you set up with somebody at the sleep lab that can help you with that. That has to be through a referral through your doctor. It does. It does. Mm -hmm. But we can set you up with the forms. And um, if, do you have a primary care doctor? I have a primary care, but I was just saying if you were going to do that. Yes, you do. You have to talk to them. But we have forms that you, you can take to them in and kind of get the conversations going so that they can oh, there's um, do that referral for you. Yeah. Yes, I can. So, yes, make sure that. Um, the food that are really good is high omega-3 fatty acids, which you can't get, like, you have to eat those to get those. Vitamin D, anything that's high in antioxidants. Um, did anybody come to the eating well lunch and learn with the dietitian last time? So some of those things are already things that she said, oh, it's okay, for us to eat. So just incorporating those into your diet is pretty easy to do anyways. Um, and then I can go back some things here too. I do two out of any And then for your brain, try to associate things. Yes, so like uh, the more exercise you do, it increases your heart rate. And when your heart rate increases, it pumps more oxygen to the brain, which releases hormones to help the neurons in your, in your brain to work well. The one at Feltner Park for the senior workers is free. Okay. Okay. Oh, good. That's, That's good to know. That is. Yes, it is. The one in the room is free. Free, yeah. And it's free. Yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah, just like walking. It's kind of cold now. I do so. that four days a week when it's not freezing. Yes, <laughs> walking is good. And it helps relax us too. Just remember to take time out for yourself too. Because we kind of get busy just relaxing and making sure we don't get too stressed out about things would definitely help.